This week on Crossfeed. Amnesty International Revisited. Does attending college destroy faith? Churches in violent video games. Stem cells, church and state. And supermodels versus the Pope. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of CrossFeed. I'm Dr. Jim Butler, pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. And I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. Welcome, everyone, after a week off. Yes, we took a week off. Uh, Dale was doing VBS, and I got caught up in doing some running around last Thursday and didn't get home till actually it was, I think, past time for us to start. So we just didn't get it happening, and uh, so that worked out okay. But uh, we actually got a couple notes from people who said they missed us. It was nice to be missed. Yep, yep. In fact, you know, usually we we do uh, we talk about this at the end, but it it sort of ties in with that. We got this email uh, from Jeff again. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for another message. Um, that he said, thanks for the shout out. All kidding aside, I can see how tired you two must be from all your duties, and I appreciate you taking time and effort to put out this podcast. It'd be nice if you could get other pastors to sit in for you, uh, for you two from time to time to give you a break, which, by the way, we have looked into, and it may happen someday. Um, another idea, maybe for this week, do a best of or one of your favorite shows. You have at least 52 so far so that you can take this week off after VBS. Uh, once again, thanks for all your efforts. This includes you to Dr. Jip. And um, <laughs> ironically, we did end up taking a week off. Unintentional, but um, but we did. So, and, you know, I, I was thinking about this, and, and honestly, this is how I relax. I mean, I really enjoy doing this podcast. And for me, yeah, the, the editing is a little bit of a pain, but I don't mind it too much. But, I mean, really, this is one of the highlights of my week is putting this together. Um, so this is, this is relaxing to me. I was actually looking forward to it and I was disappointed that we couldn't do it because I was just really kind of dragging and I just needed something to, you know, re-energize. So, um, so yeah, I've been looking forward to getting together again. Yeah, I look forward to it as well. i uh, really good to develop a real neat friendship with Dale through this and I'm very thankful for it. I'm very thankful to God that, that he brought us together to do this. By the way, if you want to be like Jeff and give us a message, uh, you can always get hold of us at crossfeed at G- no podcast at crossfeed dot com, or you can click on the screen right now. Crossfeednews dot com. Thank you. Yeah, podcast at crossfeednews dot com, or you can click on the screen right now, and it'll take you right to a place where you can get a shout out, get a word to us, and we do promise we get email. You do get, do get a shout out from us. Yep. Yep. Just like Jeff. So, appreciate that. You know, Bob, email. So, um... So now, you went to the University of Wisconsin. Yep, I did. Secular University. And yet, you managed to keep your faith. Yeah. Yeah, You know, it was funny. Um, I had, I took a class, I had some electives left over at the end. Um, I didn't have a lot of electives because I, um... I double majored in psychology and theater, and so my my psych credits took care of my uh, social studies, and my theater classes took care of my humanities, and but it didn't leave me with a lot of electives left over for just you know whatever. Um, so, but I ended up taking a class called Prophets of the Bible. I also took Kendo, by the way, Japanese sword fighting. Got a history credit for that. It's cool. Um, but anyway. Uh, I took a class called Prophets of the Bible, and in fact, it was taught by the pastor of one of the local megachurches. And, um, and, but honestly, I did not know even that he was a Christian until, um, until I talked to some of the people that were in my Hebrew class, um, happened to be members of his congregation, and I found out that way that he was. Um, but honestly, I was surprised because some of the attitudes that he had toward, um, just toward the Bible, he was really into the whole JEDP thing and um, multiple authors of Isaiah and all that kind of stuff. And so I, I was trying to figure out, you know, where he was at and, and that. 
So. And he's a pastor of a mega church. That's odd. Yeah. Hey, that or maybe you're just fitting the 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 class to the college the university. But anyway. There has been a study at the University of Texas at Austin that finds out that going to college does not necessarily ruin your faith. Matter of fact, going to a college, even a secular one, seems to build it up. Um, so people who don't go on to college tend to drop out. Oh, very nice, Blaine. Yeah. You know, generally when people think of going to college, you know, like this class that I had, it was a very, um, you know, it... Even though I was, I took this class. I was studying the Bible. Uh, there was a lot of real challenges that I had to deal with mm-hmm. in that class, and and the stuff that I really struggled with. Um, and that was that class. I mean, I had plenty of other classes that were, um, well, let's just say Christians were not um, spoken of very highly in the class. So, um, you know, this, but this study shows that. At least there's there's a correlation between people who attend uh, college and church attendance, or rather um, retaining church attendance. So the highest rates of decline in church attendance, 76.2%, um, were among those who had never attended college. Um, diminished importance... This is all those who never attended college. Uh, diminished importance placed on religion, 23.7%. Disaffiliation from religion, 20%, 20.3%. And students who earned at least a bachelor's degree, on the other hand, had the lowest rates of these three factors, with 59.2% indicating decreased church attendance and 15% placing less importance on religion and disaffiliating from religion. You know, sometimes I amaze even myself. Although, there are a lot of challenges, I mean, uh, with the extreme secularism. Uh, it's interesting that he talked even there, and they said that um, that a lot of um, campus ministries are growing. You now that more campus ministries are taking place, which I found really fascinating, considering the challenges that a lot of those groups are having on the campuses. Um, yeah. I mean, Tufts University uh, attempted to throw their uh, the Tufts uh, Christian Fellowship off the campus. Um, uh, Georgetown did do that. They threw the evangelicals yeah, we, off the campus. Uh, the University of Rhode Island, did we talk about that one, that threw the Reformed Fellowship off the campus? Yeah, there was a bunch of them. And yeah. I think we talked about one or two of them, but there have been a whole bunch on the um, on the Crosby website. Right, and so I, it's, I just find go that and type in university. There's a zillion of them. Or you go to one of my favorite organizations, the fire.org, uh, and they they battle those types of things and it's funny because it's really a pretty left-wing group but they're often associated accused of being right-wing nut jobs because they said the people they wind up fighting for all the time are republicans and uh christian groups <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know actually they're, they're, they're actually they're fairly liberal people but they said you know they're, they're, they're the ones who get battled all the time so they're the ones they wind up fighting for with all the speech codes and everything going on. So I thought it was... Well, that's it was a, a mark of a good organization if they're willing to, you know, if, if it's a, a rights organization that's willing to defend uh, even those who tend to disagree with them. Right. So that's that's integrity. Yep. So I, I thought this was interesting. Um, you know, um, I do wonder, though, about the danger of the secular worldviews, you know, in... But, you know... I'll be honest with you. My my experience has been it all depends on what's gone on in the home before they go to college. If yeah, they've been exactly. raised with, raised with a deep faith and and really that's been really brought up to them, you know that's that's going to remain. Maybe they won't be real active in college all the time. But then mm-hmm. some people do stupid things. I knew one um, place they had a campus ministry, and the service was at nine o'clock on Sunday morning. This is madness. And I was like, what college student is up at 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they got a different campus minister in there who put it at 6 o'clock on Sunday night, and the attendance went up considerably. You know, they had a lot more success then. Uh, so, um, and I think a lot of See, the college... when I was going to Madison, my, um, my home church is in Madison. 
And so I would ride my bike. It was, I mean, so yeah, I got up. Well, I went to, eh, I think I usually went to the 8 o'clock service. And then I did a, a Bible study during the the time after that. But, um, but yeah, I, I'd ride my bike. It was about, oh, two, three miles. But I was in good shape then. <laughs> Through the snow, <laughs> uphill, both ways. <laughs> Eh, it was all plowed areas, so oh, okay, it wasn't too bad. Uh, but uh, I mean, our youth director at my last church, um, who just wanted was was just raised in a really neat home, really had a heart for God, and was jogging and happened to come by our church and see it. And he's like, "Oh, it's a it's a Lutheran church. It's even Missouri Synod. This is so cool." And it was just down the road, for about two two blocks from the from his college. And he was always bringing people in. I mean, he had three or four people he was bringing in there, including his, his girlfriend slash fiance later wife, who I actually wound up uh, uh, con- uh, doing it, confirming as a member of the congregation. And uh, so it's uh, uh, really a, a neat thing. And it, this was kind of good to see, though, that it wasn't... It's not as harmful as some people want to put it. Matter of fact, I, I met one woman at one of the colleges there in, in Springfield, and uh, that was her feel- feeling. She said, you know... Ultimately, she said, the apple really doesn't far, fall that far from the tree. And, and they might go through a period of questioning. They might go through a period of doubt. They might go through some periods of really wondering what's going on. But eventually, they're going to probably wind up back where their parents are. And probably stronger for the experience. And a lot of times, I think know. they are. Uh, also, I, mean, I, I went through a lot of questioning. I mean, I, I really struggled with a lot of stuff. And, but what it did is it, it drove me to study. To you know, I had all these questions. Well, I had to find the answers. I mean, I was bound and determined to find the answers. So I started reading like crazy, and to to find these answers, and you know, and and it really it strengthened me because of that. You know, well, it's it's that whole when um when when churches are persecuted, they tend to it, it strengthens the church, you mm-hmm. know, because people are you know people that are sticking around. They're, you know, they're they're dealing with all this stuff, and they've got to come up with with answers um, to why should I keep on doing this, you know? And uh, you know that was kind of what what I dealt with. I run into this stuff, and um, whether it be from professors or just you know other students, uh, organizations, you know, all kinds of stuff. Man, I was a theater student, and uh, I mean, tell a left wing. I mean. I, sometimes I, I'd be sitting in the um, in the the green room at the um, eating my lunch or something like that, and I'm looking around and and I, I got the distinct feeling quite often that I was the only heterosexual person in the room, <laughs> and everybody else was checking you out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, I mean, it, you know, it was it was hard. Madison is. A very liberal place too. So, oh, Madison, um, terribly. But uh, speaking of uh, theater majors, we have a, a young couple just joined the congregation, just sent for their transfer, who are theater majors at William and Mary, the place that took the cross out of the chapel. So huh. uh, they 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 really have some stories to tell me. Um, they're actually going to be uh, house sitting when we go on vacation for oh, yeah. us now. So uh, and and he's a comic book geek. So he and I are. Ooh. Yeah, so he and I hit it off real quickly. We're already trading books back and forth. So, uh, great guy. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. Uh, Well, you were talking about organizations that stand up for rights, whether you agree with them or not. Uh, Let's go talk about Amnesty International, then. We talked about these guys two weeks ago. Um, And we said, well, you know, have to wait to... um, to make a decision about this until we hear their side of the story. Well, they put out a statement with their side of the story. And I was hoping for better. Well, I, I, I think this is it's kind of vaguely worded. I mean, you can read it. I mean, it almost reads it's more, you know... They 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 are um, 
I guess, kind of supportive of abortion rights. But it says on one hand, they, they're, 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 op- you know, they, they're opposed to forced abortions, for example, in China. Um, and they want to su- support the decriminalization of it. Um, but, you know, what they really talk about, though, is uh, to ensure women have health care when complications arise from abortion and to defend women's access to abortion within reasonable limits when their health or human rights are in danger. Particularly, it talks about instances of rape and things like that among refugees. And so, you know, this is such a vaguely worded statement that I was I kept reading this. I read it four times. Trying to figure out exactly what are you trying to say? Mm-hmm. I mean, because, you know, I can definitely, it says, you know, for example, the rape of a survivor in Dar- Darfur, who, because she's left pregnant as a result of the enemy, is further ostracized by her community. No, I'm going to tell you something. I mean, you know, okay, there, there's a very extreme situation that, you know, I would really struggle with sitting there and, and being blanket in condemnation. Um, yeah, but you can't make rules out of exceptions. There, right, right. I know. That's and that, But that's the example she brings up. And so, again, I'm not sure, you know, are they talking, is, is that what they're talking about in, you know, very extreme situations? Or are they saying, you know, any restriction is, is, is a violation of human rights? I'm not sure what it is they're trying to say. Okay, you, maybe you read gobbledygook better than I do. <laughs> I, I, you know, the the first thing that that they basically said is, um, is well, you know what? If we don't, we've never gotten money from the Vatican before anyway, and uh, and people of of lots of different religions uh, give money to us. So you know, basically, the first part the first part of it was, well, fine, we don't need you, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Which, you know, hey, if the Vatican said we don't like uh, crossfeed news, I'd probably say the same thing. You know, you know, right. give us money anyway, so why do I care? Yeah, right. Don't know a lot of so, uh, make you happy. I, I'd actually be thrilled if if the Vatican denounced us, because wow, what a gr- what great publicity! I'd be thrilled if Christian News denounced <laughs> us. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but okay, the the. Paragraph that caught my attention was it said, defending the right of women to sexual and reproductive integrity in the face of grave human rights violations, Amnesty International recently incorporated a focus on selected aspects of abortion into its broader policy on sexual and reproductive rights. These additions do not promote abortion as a universal right, and Amnesty International remains silent on the rights and wrongs of abortion. Which means what? <laughs> <laughs> exact well, you know, and that's the thing. It almost seems like they're being deliberately vague. You know? We're not we don't want it we we would still like to accept money from pro abortion people and we would like to accept money from pro life people. And so whatever your um your persuasion is, we'd be happy to take your money. <laughs> So I mean, you know, the reality is they need money to, you know, to do the things that they do, and and I do think that they um they really do try to, you know, I mean they do a lot of good, and they need money to do that good. Um, I'd like to see, you know, I I don't <coughs> see encouraging abortion as something that is going to help women. Um, you know, I'm always in favor of, and instead of making, instead of sort of promoting abortion um, or, or encouraging abortion as an option, which I don't know that they're necessarily doing that. But the thing is, if you instead say, well, you know what, we're going to put a lot more into educating women about um, abortion, reproduction, you know, and, and, and stuff like that, that I think that if, if half the money that went into promoting abortion was instead used for educating women, that um, I, I don't think there'd be nearly as many abortions. And I think that's probably true of the Western world. I mean, but what do you do in um, uh, Iran? 
or in uh, Gaza right now, where you know uh, uh, there is you know rape is extremely common, um, or you know in a very repressive uh, area such as Iran, where you know uh, you know there is no, a woman has basically no rights and it's almost um, you know property. I had a, a friend of mine, a uh, uh, relative of mine. And uh, she was uh, dating this guy from Pakistan, and um, he was Muslim, and uh, she just sat there and said, I can't. Actually, it started out with her witnessing, and they became attracted to each other, and she just said, this is not what God wants out of this, and so she ended the relationship. He was just like, you can't say no to me. You have no right to say no. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it was just he could not believe that a woman was just, you know, talking to him and saying, we're not going out anymore. I mean, you know, Pakistan, they would dare talk to him that way. Yeah. So I'll you, just, um, watch Borat. I haven't seen the movie, but I've heard some of his stuff. And, you know, he kind of it's a he does a parody of that. But I mean, the reason that it's amusing is because. That's the reality there. You know, we can, the way that he presents it, presents it in a way that you can laugh at it. But at the same time, you know, it's, there's a reason that satire is funny. Right. I mean, one thing, too, about Amnesty International, too, this is not, anyway, does not claim to be a theological organization, whether Christian, yeah. Hindu, Buddhist, or anything. They said, you know, uh, 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 our purpose invokes the law and the state, not God. And they're real. They're real honest, upfront about that. And they're upfront about it in the statement. So you know, I mean, it's hard for me to kind of approach things from that that angle because you know, to me, this is the taking of a life. Right. And although the extreme situations, you know, uh, I don't know if you ever read John Klotz's book on Christian ethics, uh, who used to teach at the St. Louis Seminary, but. Even in, in, in the extreme situations, especially rape and insults, even he said, you know, I don't want to go there. You know, he, he I don't want to, you know, be condem condemning in those cases. But you're dealing with something that's very, very painful at that point. Um, so, you know, and, and then she, she brings that up. So I, I, I watched out I, I, those extreme exceptions. I just wish that the, the statement itself was a little bit clearer as to what it is they're actually saying. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're kind of leaving the door open, right? To, so that if the you know, depending on the situation and that, that they've got this sort of wide berth of you know what they can actually support instead of saying you know we're only we're only talking about extreme exceptions here, right? You know, and um, you know that said, I you know I look at this and say, hey, you know, if you're all about human rights. What about the rights of those unborn humans? Right. And, um, you know, so that's that's my struggle is, hey, this is a human being no matter what. And, um, and you know, maybe, I don't know, I, I just like to say, well, you know, and what these women really need is some really good counseling, you know, to help them through this. And, right. and, and not only that, um, you know, there's a deeper issue here that if these kind of things are going on, something needs to be done about it. Um, but it's hard to turn a society around. I mean, when you when this is the society is in a sense built on this premise that women are property. Um, I don't know how. At, you know, at that point, I don't know if if saying. Um, by the way, Jim has thunderstorms in his area. That's what you're hearing in the background. Um, but anyway. I, you know, I, I, I just, I don't think this is the way to go about it. Um, I'm not saying I have all the answers either. Right. I mean, you're dealing with oppressive societies, and oppressive societies have oppressors, and women and children tend to be among those most oppressed. Um, and it's very, very hard then to, you know, deal with some of this stuff. I mean, you're dealing with, uh, you know... I mean, what was it one this man woman was raped and you know, she was the one punished because you know, it was in a you know, mid east society because she must have done something to entice the guy or something. Or she was found outside I don't know, she didn't have her scarf on. Oh. 
So, you know, I mean, when you're dealing with this kind of mindset, you know, it gets very difficult to figure out what, you know, I, and uh, I, you know, and I agree with you, but it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's a muddy situation. Uh, it's one of those things well, where I think if you're going to wind up supporting AI, you you kind of wind up supporting it saying, you know, 95, 90% of what you do, I can support. I mean, I, I disagree with what they say about the United States, too. Uh, but, you know, the lot, you know, 80% I can support, but 20% I'm, I, I, I'm frustrated, but what am I going to do? You know? Yeah. I know! We can get a supermodel out there to talk about it. Well, there you go, because they have all the answers. They right, you got it. Or at least they think they do. <laughs> Especially have, uh, in Brazil. Yes, uh, Giselle Bunchen, and I probably horribly murdered that name. Um, which sounds, which sounds German. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know. The problem with supermodels is so many of them change their name, you don't really know what their real name is. That's true. Um, but uh, she is criticizing the Roman Catholic Church, um, Church's opposition to condom use and abortion. And her rationale, deeply theological, um, as we expect from supermodels, she says that the church's take on contraception is hopelessly outdated because it was adopted when women were virgins and the guys were virgins. Today, no one's a virgin when they get married. I have got to me. know what her history is. Though. No, okay. I mean, that, 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 besides the fact she hasn't met either one of us uh, or a lot of other people I can think of, um, that beside the point, I mean, she doesn't know her history. I mean, there, you know, that it was quite that, that that was nothing unusual. I mean, throughout history, it's been nothing unusual. I mean, yeah. uh, they used to talk about guys going out and sowing their wild oats. I mean, you can read. I mean, it's just it's just throughout throughout history. I mean, uh, we had a pastors' conference here, and we had a, a Reformation scholar, and he talked about uh, wedding sermons, Lutheran wedding sermons. He said that which was really unique for Lutherans. They they kind of developed the wedding sermon. And he said, if it was a pregnancy, if the woman was already pregnant, the wedding had to be at night. Night to remember. Huh. And there was something else that they weren't allowed to do. But I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's, that's kind of how you knew if she was pregnant or not, because was the sermon held during the day, or the sermon was held during the daytime or not. He said, but, uh, you know, he said, if, if, she, if there was a pregnancy, it was held in the evening. You know, this reminds me of when... Um, you know when kids, like teenagers, talk about sex, and they think that like as long as they use um, sort of slang terms for things, that their parents won't know what they're talking about. Because <laughs> like, what would you know? What would my old parents know about sex? Like, never mind that they have a kid. You know? Where did <laughs> you come from? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, but you know, the, it, it, that's this this kind of mentality. Like, oh well, nobody was having sex for the, until recently. You know, it's a brand new development. <laughs> oh. it's just discovered or something. I mean, you know, like, okay, it's always been going on. I mean, I, of course, I've I, I've always disagreed with the Roman Catholic Church in terms of birth control. Anyway, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't see any problem with a couple using it. I've encouraged the couples to use it. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I saw marriages just really struggle. Um, you know, with 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 the birth coming too fast and the financial pressures and everything. I mean, um, so uh, you know, I, I I I'm I'm not, you know, to totally opposed to that. Um, but you know. To, to equate the birth control with um, the abortion, it's just, you know, this, again, you're just, you're just making this leap. I mean, she goes, how is it possible to not want people to use condoms and also ha not have abortions? It's impossible. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's called keep it in your pants. 
Sorry <laughs> to be a bit crude. But, I mean, come on. This is the reality that, you know, the safest sex is abstinence. Right. But, I mean, you know, I, I mean, uh, 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 you know, it's just the government, you know, ha- and Brazil has banned most abortions, but they hand out 300 million free condoms each year to prevent AIDS and unwanted pregnancies. Um, you know, and... and uh, and the Pope Benedict the the, uh, the 16th criticized um, what abortion they do uh, uh, do allow and this this free handout, um, which you know again as a government policy I don't think it's the brightest idea in the world. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and you can debate that, uh, but I don't live in Brazil either, so you know I don't want to. Um, but I still, I think that, you know, the idea that, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, the, 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 you know. Concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. And, and maybe with, with that part, she'd even have something. But it's it's really, you know, again, I'm never quite sure of everything. I mean, but it's the abortion side. I just, I think she's just, I just, I just can't figure out where that's coming from. It's. Apparently, well, if you don't allow them and they get pregnant, well, you got to do something. So, so you know, you're going to, 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 to stop this, too. Yeah, because you can't put them up for adoption. Because there's not, like, all these people all over the world who would be happy to adopt them. Right. It'd be nice if they'd make, you know, adoption a little easier. Um, but as, as far as, you know, cheaper and all that kind of stuff. But it, it it is a uh, you know I don't know I just I just the the fruity celebrity again I guess Brazil's yeah. answer to Paris Hilton I don't know <laughs> pretty much I, it just wasn't oh well you know there's not so, there's no such thing as a person being a virgin when they're married <laughs> Gee, I, you know. There is such a thing as delayed gratification, you know. Um, oh, that line from Dragnet, the movie, uh, where uh, Dan Aykroyd has this great line. He says, "There are two things that separate us from the separate man from animals. Number one, we use utensils. Number two, we can control our sexual urges." <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> I don't remember it, so that's okay. But yeah, I mean, it just, it just, yeah, it just. I don't know. I, I don't. Maybe, maybe, maybe she can't say no. I don't know. Um, and she's afraid that if you know happens to her, she'll ruin that ba- that, that, that 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 you know wonderful body of hers. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, we definitely know that, um, what her uh, you know as far as promiscuity. You know, there's words for people like that that I'm not going to use because. We have no problems with, you know, bad ratings, but... Luke um, calls her a sinner. As you wish. Fair enough. That's That was, that was the term he used in that gospel reading from last Sunday. If this man knew what kind of woman she is, he would not let her touch her. She's a sinner. We'll use Luke's nice, polite term there. A sinner. But, you know, that also highlights just... This is what... what kind of what she's hitting here, even if she's, I mean, it, there is some truth to what she's saying, that, yeah, this is a serious problem. But, you know, that's the, the, basically what she's saying to, uh, you know, is, well, we should just get rid of speed limits because nobody follows them anyway. When will this insanity end? You know. And well, no, 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 no. We need to get rid of the speed limits and make sure we have extra big airbags in there. There you go. Now, yeah. So. Yeah. Th- I mean, that's the mentality. Well, nobody follows the law, so then we shouldn't have the law. Right. Or, or nobody follows the law, or we should do something things to prevent them from hurting themselves. Uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 it it's a, you know, I, it's just a, a silly way of thinking. It really is. Instead of saying, you know, what about thinking better of ourselves? Yeah. You know, it's it comes down to this. All right. We should be able to um to kill human beings so that we can have um 
uh, sexual stimulation. Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. And that's what she's saying. I've got a problem with that. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Or or you know, um, or the 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 church should not speak against such things. Um, and the church is wrong to speak against such things. Again, it's you know, it's it's a strange comment to of a person who really hasn't thought what through what she's saying. You know, um, just just and just just being very flighty and very. Whatever she's being. Let's go to Australia. If you can dismiss all your sin, um, then you don't need a savior. That's true. Let's go to Australia. This is a little bit more interesting uh, debate. Now, I'm not sure what an MP is. Member of Parliament. Member of Parliament. Okay, I was thinking military so, police, and I knew that couldn't well, be Well, I'm right. sure you were, <laughs> <laughs> given your son. <laughs> Who, by the way, I'm proud to announce... Is uh, been assigned to a tank crew, and will be going to Fort Knox, Kentucky, for his training in the Abrams tank. So he does that in about three weeks. So and you can think that all the gold in Fort Knox being guarded by a bunch of guys and kids running around in tanks. <laughs> so anytime you ever see a thing of somebody trying to break into the Fort Knox, think. Yeah, and where are all the tank crews sitting around? <laughs> with these <laughs> with these just out of high school kids going, Let's explode you know, let's load this sucker and shoot it. <laughs> we wanna make some noise. <laughs> and you don't wanna oh, think that's goodness. exactly what they're doing. <laughs> And there's a guy going with gold. Let's have target practice with our M16s. You homo sapiens and your guns. You know, anyway, back to Australia. Yeah, back to Australia. So, you know, well, sorry about that. But yeah, okay. I didn't know what an MP was there in this thing. Um, yeah. And we've had the same issue kind of in America, too, really. Um, mm -hmm. Where, um, you know, the, the, uh, the Catholic Archbishop of Sydney... Uh, has uh, basically said, you know, Catholic um, members of parliament cannot back stem cell research. And, you know, if they do, they probably would not commune them. Uh, now, as I recall, in the last election, wasn't there a, a, a couple of archbishops who refused to allow John Kerry to commune? Yep. yep. Yeah, so it's, it's the same thing. Um, need, need to clarify, uh, and this article is talks about stem cell, stem cell, stem cell, and um, what it doesn't say in um, is, is embryonic stem cell research. Um, I, that's I just something. I, I, I don't I don't find the word embryonic anywhere in no, it's not actual story. And obviously, so, adult um, stem cell research we have no problem with. Stem shells from, from from mice we have no problem with, uh, but we're talking human embryos, and that's that's what we we struggle with much more. Um, and, and, you know, here's the deal. I mean, I, I mean, there really is a separation of church and state. And you know, if you are a member, or if you are Roman Catholic, and the Roman Catholic Church has said that we are opposed to the destruction of life in any form, uh, whether it be embryonic or abortion or whatever. Um, and if you vote in favor of it, you're sinning. And you can't be a member of the church anymore. I'm not sure why people are so upset about that. I mean, then, okay, fine, you become Episcopalian. Well, yeah. Um, uh, I, I mean, you know, here it is. I mean, you know, you... If you don't want to vote your faith, don't vote your faith. You know, go find a faith you like. Yeah. I can, you know, I can understand um, the these priests saying, I mean, I kind of agree with them. You know, in the sense that, okay, if you're going to call yourself a Catholic, then you ought to be acting like a Catholic. 
Now, I would hope that their attitude would be the same towards someone who says, yes, you know, I'm not a member of parliament, but I also, you know, support this bill. I'm voting for this guy because he's in favor of it, you know. Well, whether the person's actually in a position of authority where they can actually do something about it or whether they're just a voter, um, you know, if if you're going to, you need to be consistent. You know, I'm I'm not saying that everybody that, that has some disagreement with, with the church's position on one thing or another um, should be. He says, not excommunicated, but we're going to refuse communion. Isn't that what excommunication basically is? Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Uh, so, I, you know, so if you're going to do that, you got to be consistent, right. and and that's what I see. That I see a lot of when you're dealing with situations like this, and there's a million other situations where you see inconsistency. Like, um, you'll have uh, someone who's gay who's excommunicated, but they don't excommunicate the couple who's living together. This is madness. Uh, hold on a minute here. You know, let's. Let's be consistent. You know, which however you decide to handle it as as a pastor, as a church, um, you know, this really it needs to be dealt with um, consistently, one way or another. They can always transfer their membership to whatever church Ted Kennedy is a member of, and you know they'll have no problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I mean the, the fact of the matter is though, it's when you're dealing with the Roman Catholic Church, you're dealing with a huge body, which has all the problems of Protestantism, from liberalism to extreme conservatism, only they all, they're all under the same body. And, you know, different archbishops uh, and different bishops look at things differently, different churches. Um, there, There's uh, two Catholic churches up here, uh, not too far from me, different as night and day. One is very conservative, and, uh, you know, I've worked with the priests on, um, you know, a couple different th- pro-life issues and uh, the vote that we lost to, to try to get the amendment to ban gay marriage in Massachusetts. Um, but, as a matter of fact, one member of that congregation, two, uh, one mem- who is a member of the uh, uh, legislature here, left and started going to another Catholic church where the priest was very much in favor of, of gay unions and everything. Uh, and so, I mean, so here you you know you you have two churches of the same denomination. So, to a certain extent, that 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 you, you got a lot of struggle with that church body and, and the different positions that they're going to hold within it. Yeah. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. I I you know and I I I don't know I I don't know how you I don't know how I would handle as a pastor. I really don't know how I would handle if I had a member who was a member of a. Um, of government and made votes that, you know, I believe were not biblical. But, right. you know, um, but again, well, I mean, is it is it the job of the government to make a Christian society? Well, no, you know, I don't think that's really the issue here. I think it's a matter of um, of how a person lives out their faith. And, and at what point can the church say, Hey, what you're doing there is not right, and um, and you need to repent. And at, you know, at what point is it is you know? And and part of this is um, the situation with uh, bills that are depending how they're worded um, can can drastically affect you know where you end up voting for. It's sort of like Jim was talking about with MC International. Well, I agree with eighty percent of it. I disagree with twenty percent of it. Yeah, I'm going to vote for it because of the 80%. Um, and uh, I'm, and I think that the 20% is unfortunate, but I think that the 80% uh, at this point is, is more important than um, than the, the 20% that I disagree with. I don't know if that's necessarily the case with this bill or not, because it sounds like this bill is predominantly about um, presumably embryonic stem cell research. Right. Because I can't imagine, you know, having a problem with just regular standard adult stem cell research. So, um, I, you know, I think that looking at this sort of hypothetical, what would I do in that situation? I think I would definitely want to sit down and talk with those people if they're members of my congregation 
and uh, uh, you know, Archbishop is a little more complicated than that. But um, you know, but I want to sit down and talk with them and say, hey, you know, you say that you're a Roman Catholic, um, but this is not according to Roman Catholic teachings. Are you know, and there's there's more diplomatic ways to say it, but basically, you know, are you sure that you want to call yourself a Roman Catholic? Right. You can go be a high church Anglican so, and it doesn't care. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, so, there's all kinds of other things. Uh, you know, well, we'd rather you not be Roman Catholic anymore. You know, go be a whatever. Sure, there's well, something liberal. More to the point, we'd like you to understand why, you know, and this is the approach that I tend to take when I'm dealing with somebody that, um, you know, whose beliefs vary from the, the teachings of the church, um, or as I understand it, the teachings of the Bible, you know, I'll, I'll sit him down and, and say, you know, let's talk about this. Why do you believe what you believe? And let me explain to you why um, why this is the position that the church has taken on this issue. And, um, and let me at least try to help you understand, you know, why this is important and what the consequences are and, you know, what does God's word say about it and stuff like that. And, you know, instead of just, I, I really, I think that the excommunication or refusing communion or however you want to word it um, should always be a last resort and that you should, you know, Matthew 18 says, first you go and talk to him, you know, then you take a couple of people with you. And I don't know if he's followed, if this archbishop has followed these steps or not, but, um, you know, those are the steps you need to take. And ultimately, it's, um, you know, the congregation um, as a whole, and, and I suppose this archbishop probably considers himself a representative of the, the church body. But, um, but he really, is the is church body. That... <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that... Uh, personally, <laughs> I think his individual pastor should go and talk to him mm. and, you know, and so I'm discussing but, with him now. But that's not the right thing. But again, you know, under, higher, under Roman Catholic hierarchy, I mean, the archbishop... Here's the rules for all my bishops and all parishes that I, I I'm over. Yeah, this is it. I mean, it's 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 a completely different way we would think. Uh, you know, we we don't we can't pass rules like that. And so he is the church. Right, let's end up on a hopefully kind of a lighter note here. Blow him up for Jesus here. All right, the. Uh... Sony for the PlayStation 3 um, has a game called Resistance Fall of Man. And uh, there is a shootout between rival gunmen with hundreds killed during a gun battle inside the cathedral. Manchester Cathedral. And, yeah. So it, it takes place in that, you know, with video games being more realistic and that, a lot of them are um, take place in actual locations. Well... Church of England is saying, hold on a minute. That's the Manchester Cathedral. How dare you depict a big gun battle uh, between, you know, in this church? It just doesn't sit well. Right. It would be like having a, a, a big shoot em out in uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I. Now, there was a follow up, I guess, that Sony did wind up apologizing for this. Yeah. You know, probably we're sorry you were offended, uh, but uh, you know we're sorry you were, we're sorry we offended you, but we're not pulling anything. Probably most no. likely something like that. But you know, I do think this. Come on, you can use an open street. You know, uh, the use of a church to show a bloody battle. Um, you know, I, I, and I suppose you're not. Try. I suppose you're not recommending this game on Tech Talk for families. <laughs> No, no, we generally don't get rid of, into M-rated games. You know, there was one comment on this story that said, well, you know, the battle's between humans and aliens, <laughs> so it's, it's it's not exactly the same thing. But, um, no, actually, I, I looked at it and said, it's a PlayStation 3 game. How many people have PlayStation 3s? It's not a big deal. Ignore it, it'll go away. That's you true. <laughs> if it was a Wii, it'd be different. But, you know. Right, yeah. <laughs> You know, PlayStation 3 was real big when it first came out, and, you know, that every, they never, and because nobody had one. But it, when they start actually getting them, they're going, 
Ew. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to so. take it back. Well, actually, well, you know, the problem is well, most people just didn't get them in the first place because um, cause they're so darn expensive. So the, the diehards got them. <laughs> the rest of them, I mean, they're sitting on shelves all over the place. You know, we you still can't find. We have one, but um, that was because I called Walmart up one day and, and said, uh, when do you expect them in? And, uh, and they said, we actually got six in this morning, and I called up my wife and said, let's go. <laughs> Although it does but, uh, say that they it does say they sold a million copies. Yeah. So, so you know, it's not that you know, uh, um, you know, but still, it, either way, even if it is aliens, I mean, you 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 can you can do it, and all kinds of they could do it in you know, uh, the Tower of London. They could do it in you know some Scottish moor. You can do it in all kinds of places. You can do it on London Bridge and watch it fall down. Uh, you know, they, they can use all kinds of things um, without using you know, for that matter, a church. They could have done it, like, on the street where the church is in the background along with a bunch of other scenery. Mm-hmm. You know, and that wouldn't have been a big deal. Right. I mean, yeah, there's a million different places. But you don't um, need to have the guy standing up, standing up on the altar shooting people down. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's... Uh, so, that 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 was just, I just think it's irresponsible, and it's not like you know, it's not like that you didn't think about it first. I mean, they mm-hmm. had to go in, you know, and, and get pictures. It says, you know, it said it said photographers may have visited the cathedral to take pictures for use in the game. You you you've got to seriously sit down and design what you're doing. You got to think through. This is what we want to do. We want to go. Show a church. We want to have the people on the pews and on the altar and, you know, uh, rappelling down from the stained glass windows. And, you know, this is, you know, we want to show blood, you know, and on the hymnals. I mean, you know. You know, the other thing is, we want to use the, the not can- just pictures. They'd have to have pretty good measurements, too. I mean, I, when I was, actually, when I was at seminary, I, um, I, my apartment. There, right on the campus housing, um, I designed a, a game level based on my apartment, where you could where monsters and aliens would pop up and go around, and you know, so it's it's actually still um, out there, and I, it wasn't based on any of the like seminary uh, like classrooms or, or anything like that. You know, nowadays, if you if you design a, a game. Uh, level based on like a school or something like that. There was I just saw an article not too long ago. There was a kid that um, that used you know the sort of level design things for games. I forget which game it was, but um, it was he did it. He used his school as a model, and um, and he was expelled for it because they're saying you know you're encouraging people to come to school and bring guns and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you didn't have any monsters know. jumping out of Tijin's tower. No, 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 none of that. Oh, okay. It was just based on my little apartment, you know. So it, with that particular game engine that I was using, you couldn't have long hallways So, because um, there was a glitch in the system. Mm. Um, for any geeks out there, it was based on the old Marathon engine. Mm. No so, clue. Um, but anyway, no, I mean, but yeah, they had to take measurements. I mean, they had to think through, we want to use the altar candles as flamethrowers here. I mean, you know, or whatever it is they're doing. And... That is just, I don't care if it's the Manchester Cathedral. I don't care if it's a uh, podunk Unitarian Universalist church. I don't care if it's a Hindu mm-hmm. temple. I consider it right. very sacrilegious to use any place of worship as a scene of a battle like that. Yeah, well, another comment was, what if this is a mosque or a, a, you know, or Mecca or, or something like that, you know? Imagine what the the reaction would be to that. You know, and in fact, you know, that's something interesting. There's a lot of games that, um, you know, uh, military strategy games like Rainbow Six and stuff like that. I don't play those games, but it would be interesting to know whether any of those games, where a mosque would actually be very appropriate because a lot of times you're fighting against um, you know, Muslim insurgents or whatever, stuff like that. Um, and, and a lot of times there are 
firefights that go on in mosques in, in some of those areas. Um, to know whether any game company had enough guts to actually include one of those um, in their game. I doubt so if it. Anybody, yeah, if anybody's ever uh, played any of those games, um, you know, I've, I've got nothing against people that play them. I just not really into military games. But um, if uh, if any of you have, podcast at CrossyNews.com. I'd be really curious about that. And that brings us to the end of our show tonight. But as Dale said, podcast at crossfeednews.com is the place to get a hold of us. Again, anybody sending us email always gets a shout out. Or you can just click on the screen right now if you're watching this on iTunes. It'll take you to the page and you can send us our our uh, your, your comment. Yep. Or you can go to our website, crossfeednews.com, and uh, click on send us a voice message and use your computer's microphone to send us a message that way. Or you can go to the website and just leave a comment, um, and <clears throat> we'll get your message that way. If you leave, if you want to leave a comment uh, as far as feedback for the show, you can uh, on the website. You can just go to the um, there's a separate entry for each of our shows uh, where you can um, also get the there's links to the the two the audio and the video for it, which obviously you've figured out if you're you know, watching or listening to this, how to get the audio or video. But if um, if you click on add a comment, you can just leave your comment right there too. So there's lots of different ways to get a hold of us, and we'd love to hear your opinions on any of these articles or just you know general comments. We love hearing from our listeners and viewers. Oh, we also have our new Faith Speak page or whatever that that thing, the, the Christian version of MySpace. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And we'll, uh, shout out to Frank up, for his yeah. little uh, comment to us too there, um, and because yeah. he says he's listened to us and he set up a free banner for us, and uh, very much appreciate that as well. So it's good, good getting feedback, and uh, good, good being noticed. Ah, uh, and then our sponsor, Shop Smart, Shop S Smart, PDAPerformance.com. Mm-hmm. If you have a Palm OS device, um, you want to check out their software. Very cool stuff, and a lot of really neat stuff coming down the pike. Um, hopefully sooner than later. They've been working on it for a number of years, so it, it's a long time coming. Um, just a really powerful engine under the hood. Uh, Saguaro, the name of the project. So check it out. And with that, God give you all a very good week in his uh, uh, love and grace. Have a good weekend. Enjoy yourself and worship this Sunday. And uh, the good Lord watch over you, and we'll see you next week. Good Lord will, and the night, creek don't everybody. rise. God bless. Oh, switch off. The convoy was stranded on the west side of Manchester. The site was guarded by stalkers, so the only route in was on foot. The radio message from Hale's squad said they were entering Manchester Cathedral. The cathedral was a field hospital during the war. It was abandoned in a hurry and still had some supplies and ammunition. Unfortunately, it was also a breeding ground for some of the lower forms of chimera 